Well, hello there, everyone. Welcome uh, to the first edition of uh, the Legion Podcast Lists of Legends. Um, what we're doing uh, this time out on the show is we are collecting some of the finest minds available, not just at Legion Podcast, but anywhere on the planet. And we are assembling a list of the top 20 uh, vampire films of all time. Uh, th the way that we do this is we are going to go round robin. Everyone is going to recommend a film. And in real time, we will place that film in order on this list. So, uh, without further ado, let's introduce everybody. Uh, starting clockwise, first Heather Powell uh, from Friday Nightmares. Uh, hey, Bo. Hey. Thanks for having me. This is awesome to be here. I'm super excited. This uh, should be very stupid fun. Uh, next, stupid fun. <laughs> next on our list is uh, is the one, the only, uh, I think, wait, did people get reshuffled on me in this gallery view? I may have to edit some text here in a second. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, also clockwise, we've got Scott Crawford uh, from Friday Nightmares. Uh, we have, uh, sorry, Scott, go ahead. I'm uh, thrown uh, by the fact that everybody's <laughs> names have changed. <laughs> this has well, blown my mind. I just want to say thanks for having me on this. I am looking forward to working with all of you. Excellent. Uh, below him uh, on your screen is uh, Ricky Morgan of every show. <laughs> <laughs> nice to have you here, sir. Yeah, man. Anytime I get to work with Bo, it's always a blast. So. You know, I'm talking to you in like fourth person or whatever. But anyways, I am the stupid and stupid fun. Excellent. <laughs> That's what we're looking for uh, on, on this program. Um, so, guys, uh, the this is, of course, a definitive list, meaning that once we have assembled the these 20 films, uh, there will be no further argument. Uh, whatever is number one is the best uh, vampire movie of all time. And uh, and whatever is number twenty will be the worst vampire film of all time. Uh, that is just math. So, uh, with that in mind, let us begin and uh, let's start in order uh, of introduction. Uh, Mike, did I introduce you? Holy shit! <laughs> I'm I mean, so sorry. I I'm sorry. I'm there's like just a... no introductions that could uh, do me justice. Okay, but. <laughs> Here, here's the thing though here's the good news is i now have everybody's uh uh name where it belongs so uh <laughs> yes i skipped over you briefly but it was all in the interest of science um, i got your name where it belongs <laughs> i don't know that we need to do that um so mike uh first of all thank you very much for being here sorry sorry to to gloss over the legend that is mike merriman and uh you know, so how are you sir and 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 how's everything going it's going great it's sunday morning here coffee time but uh i'm ready i'm ready to talk some vampires excellent uh okay we are uh prepared then uh to begin with uh film number one it won from a list from heather powell uh ma'am what is the first li the for temporarily the greatest a uh, vampire film of all time. Well, uh, this film, I think, covers it all. Sexy. It's fun. It has Quentin Tarantino. How can you go wrong? It's from Dust Till Dawn, 1996. All right. Nice. From Dust Till Dawn, the greatest vampire movie of all time. That is until <laughs> uh, we come to Scott Crawford. Uh, Scott Crawford, <laughs> give me a movie. All right, so my number one uh, is, I think it was the Swedish vampire film, and that is Let the Right One In. Uh, just such a dark uh, but really well done film that kind of has this weird love story mixed in with it. Boy, that's an awfully good movie. Uh, so, the, the decision before us panel, what is the better movie, From Dust Till Dawn or Let the Right One In? Mm. It's, it's kind of a uh, they're just so different, so different. <laughs> <laughs> they are better, they better are but what? hey that's why that's why we have the tough job i will i will i'll be the first to say as much as i love from dust till dawn let the right one in is a better movie yeah i'm afraid i have to go with that too 
I would say as a vampire, if we're strictly judging these as vampire movies, I would say let the right one in. From Dust Till Dawn, the fun factor is off the charts. Sure. And sexy. But sexy, gory, um, of course, great dialogue, uh, which is obvious with a Tarantino movie. But um, uh, here's another argument. Uh, from Dust Till Dawn, only half a vampire movie. Let yeah, the right one say, in. 100% a yeah. vampire movie. Oh, no one asked for your opinion. <laughs> <laughs> That's accurate. That is accurate. Is Bo trying to coin the term half pyre? <laughs> right. It's a half pyre movie. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's it's one hell of a half vampire movie. Sure. So I will give it that, but I think let the right one in. Oh man, it it kind of hit me in ways vampire movies hadn't in years. And right. uh yeah, I, oh, I have to go with that one. All right. Well, it was good while it lasted from Dust Till Dawn. <laughs> Let the right one in. Now. Nice. All right, Heather. The, I, that was on my list, too, so I can't I can't complain too much. Great film. Uh, Yeah. Now, Let the Right One In, greatest movie, uh, greatest vampire movie of all time from Dust Till Dawn, of course. Uh, the worst. <laughs> so. <laughs> oh, wow. Hey, look, Clearly. again, this is all math. I, this is... <laughs> <laughs> I don't I don't know what else to tell you. Um okay. So uh next on on the list uh Ricky Morgan. Uh I'm going with the uh the 92 Bram Stoker's Dracula. Ooh. That is a solid film. All right. So, Bram Stoker's Dracula. Better than from from Dust Till Dawn. Oh. Mm. Mm. Mm-hmm. I mean, I think so, but I look here's here's the argument I will make, both in favor of and against uh, this movie at the same time. I Keanu think Reeves, Keanu, Re <laughs> yes, Keanu Reeves, and I would argue Winona Ryder are both awful in Bram Stoker's Dragon. Yeah. yeah, just terrible. But but Gary Oldman, Gary Oldman, and a lot of those. The practical effects and the gothic atmosphere that it is almost one of the best vampire movies. Not all, I mean, clearly it's on the list, so it's one of the best vampire movies, but it it's almost like the best vampire movie. But there are a couple of performances that yep. are just kind of trash. Yeah, I'm totally down with that. I mean, that that totally makes sense. That's the drawback of it. Mm -hmm. But when I think about the atmosphere, I'm mm -hmm. thinking about. To me, watchability, the things that I'm going to go to, the way that they captured, you know, just the visuals in that movie, I think, are just outstanding, being that they went with old school effects. Mm -hmm. And I know that's not the argument we're having here, but I don't know, there's something about that that's always been intriguing to me. I think it's shot beautifully. Yeah, I mean, I don't <laughs> I, I don't disagree with any of that. Um, but you do have one on a rider and, and uh, Keanu Reeves. That's the problem. Right. That a hundred percent. That is the problem. So, uh, but is it that big of a problem? Even if we look at the costume design, how it was filmed, like, I don't think you can take anything away from that film. It is a better made movie than from dust till dawn. Mm -hmm. I, and again, there's yeah. just, it's, so, it's such a different feel that they're going for because a lot of my other movies on this movie on this list is going to, kind of be in the ballpark of dust at all <laughs> yeah very good point i'm yeah, uh, this sorry this go ahead be, okay uh, this is probably be one of the uh better representations of bram stoker's novel too i would think yes mm. Mm. all right mm. so what i am hearing and correct me if i'm wrong is that we are kind of collectively saying that bram stoker's dracula is better than from dust till dawn Yes, I vote for yeah. Bram Stoker's Dracula. Is it Stay better here. than Let the Right One In? Oh man, Bo. No, I, yeah, <laughs> I think that's. I, I think that's a hard no. I think Winona Ryder and and like this is the the glass ceiling that they run yeah. into. I don't think she pulls down the movie that much. Yeah, but but I, I think the Let the Right In is a better movie. But I don't think Winona Ryder ruined Dracula. Like she's not the best, but she's not the worst. All right. So, but but you are you saying that kind of we all agree. Yes, it I think let the right one two. is still very much ahead okay. of the curve. Yeah, uh, the right. Oscar Ellie relationship is just so good. It's yeah, yep, real good movie. Mm -hmm. So, 
right now, let the right one in. Best vampire movie of all time from Dust Till Dawn. The worst. Um, <laughs> okay. So, uh, let uh, it's my turn going clockwise. Uh, I am going to throw on this list uh, Toby Hooper's Salem's Lot. Ooh. Yeah. Uh, now I that one written down <laughs> it there may be some pushback because technically this is a television miniseries yep. but uh as far as your average i don't know three-ish hour vampire story goes uh i think it's it's creepy i think it does right by the book I think that Barlow is one of the, I mean, it's certainly inspired by Nosferatu, but it's, it's still kind of distinct and, and creepy. Um, the idea of vampirism as plague going through this town, I think is really interesting. And, uh, so yeah, I think Salem's Lot is great. I think it's, it, it is the movie that scared the shit out of Man, e every that, generation X individual. The kid, the yeah, the kid floating outside the yes. window is still nightmarish to me now. Yes. I mean, it still works its magic on me. Damn you, Toby Hooper. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, I have no. to say, uh, this was, uh, I actually watched this for the first time this year. And Salem's Lot is just one of my favorite, one of my favorite Stephen King novels. And finally getting a chance to watch the original. Uh, yeah, I have to say it, it still holds up like, to this day because i watched it and i was legitimately creeped out with certain scenes in this film and it's a very good adaptation of king's novel as well not to mention um, fred willard running around sleeping with everybody's it, right yeah. that red that <laughs> red satin underwear that he's got those boxers <laughs> man that is i could see myself wearing those I, i'm young enough to remember when treehouse of horror parodied the scene with yep. the vampire floating outside the window, and I was so young at the time that I didn't even know it was parodying that. When I finally saw Salem's Lot, I was like, "Oh my god!" Like it all makes sense now. <laughs> uh, all right, uh, Heather, have you seen this? Or are you now being the baby of the group and not a Gen Xer? I mean, so much younger than Scott. Oh. <laughs> um, I haven't had a chance to see this movie, so I have nothing to add. Sorry. All right. So the question to uh, the four of us who have seen this. I was going to say, Heather, just look at the box cover and make your judgment there. Okay, right. that sounds like a good idea. There's a uh, lot of people that choose movies by that. When, when all else fails. <laughs> all, all you need to know is that classically trained actor James Mason at yes. one point confronts a priest and says, back, holy man, back, shaman. <laughs> It's amazing. It's Son incredible. of a bitch, I'm in. It's done by Stephen King, the book. Yeah. Oh God. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Salem's Lot. How amazing. could it not be good? It's really good. Uh, and I think again uh, to this day, I, I think I watched it not long ago, and I'll be the first to make this terrible pun. I, uh, that movie still has teeth. Um, <laughs> mm -hmm. That's it, look. That's exactly the kind of shitty punnery you can expect on this program. Um, so true. This this movie will never get long in the tooth. That's right. <laughs> So Ooh. the question is, and I know I, Heather again, you're going to have to kind of trust our judgment here. Um, <sighs> I'm is, sorry. Is Salem's Lot better than From Dust Till Dawn? Yeah, because I trust Ricky, Mike, and Bo. Oh. So yeah. Oh, I am <laughs> wounded, ma'am. <laughs> it is. Uh, you know, I'm going to have to say yes. It is better uh, because I'm one of those people that grew up absolutely terrified of this movie mm -hmm. uh dust to dawn is fun it's a roller coaster ride nothing wrong with that but if we're talking about straight up vampire flicks man salem's lot is very powerful yeah i, I agree i think i have to agree as well all right better or worse than bram stoker's dracula mm. I'm going to say it's better than Bram Stoker's Dracula as well. I am going to say, let me think about it for a second. <laughs> Ricky, how do you feel that's, about this? That's where I'm at too. I, I, I don't know. Well, let's just say on my list, Salem's Lot was number nine. Mm -hmm. Okay. So mm -hmm. it's, it's, I mean, again, rewatchability that's yeah. kind of what i was going for if i'm if i've got them sitting here on this shelf what would be the order that i would want to watch them in sure 
Mike, you got any? Have, have you come to a conclusion? I mean, I'm trying to. Yeah, I mean, if if we're see, the thing is, it's like it's almost how you personally right rank a movie because it's like if we're looking at watchability, well, Salem's Lot is what three hours in total, I mm -hmm. think. Yeah. So. But if we're not if we're not even considering that, I'm trying to look for any flaws in it other than the running time might scare off people. But I don't I see mean, any flaws in Sam's Lot at all. I think you're uh, Bram Stoker's Dracula. I think you're still talking like two fifteen, two thirty. So yeah, it's two, long too. yeah, it's not a short movie yeah. either. Yeah. Uh, um, I'll tell you what. Let's. I'll tell you. What, let, let's just look at this for a second. Let's see what this looks like. So Salem's Lot. Let the right one in remains at number one salem's lot below that bram stoker's dracula from dust till dawn i can live with that yep yeah. everybody feel good about that all right moving on the decisions only get tougher uh mike uh it is your your pick sir all right well some heavy hitters came out really early so i'm like should i even name this one off the list but i really like it it's an older one it's vampire circus has everyone wow. seen that mm. yeah yeah i that almost made my list vampire circus is a, a strong pick i'm gonna right now it's gonna sit at number five but let's talk about this yeah uh the th one thing to keep in mind when i was making my list is like i i knew that we were we were making personal top tens but we were also compiling the top 20 so i kind when i was compiling mine i was trying to put stuff on there that i personally liked and that i thought maybe might not be on other people's in case we need like leftovers to fill out all these spots so to me vampire circus is kind of in that area where it might not be like everyone's personal top movie but can it find a place on the top 20 and for me for me personally it would but i'm anxious to hear what everyone has to say about this movie um because uh, yeah okay all right so uh yeah, i like it I, it's funny because i didn't even you know if, if i had to make a 15 list it'd probably been there yep same here <laughs> yeah yeah i mean that right that's the thing about vampire circus is it's really good it's surprise it, it, it kind of fits into that later hammer vampire world where it's like this we're gonna show a little boob it's gonna be a little bit bloody it has a classic resurrection like oh we're trying to resurrect someone who formerly was right staked. yeah yeah uh it, and it has a lot of those hammer elements but it almost feels like not hammery-ish as straight hammer films but it has hammer elements <laughs> i love yeah. i love the carnival i love the traveling carnival coming to town element i i feel the carnival freak show whatever circus type thing is totally underutilized in horror because i think it is automatically a creepy setting and i just i just really enjoy the movie i think it's a very easy watch even for people that aren't necessarily hammer horror fans or they're looking to try to uh get into that hammer genre a little more i think vampire circus is a good kind of like lead in it's a good one yeah uh one we need one... to keep rob zombie away from it though yeah no shit because that uh, sounds like something he would be all over and you're like no right leave you, it alone you're gonna filthy that up in a way that i don't need to see i don't need to see which vampire, vampire circus yeah uh a quick note to the chat uh first of all thanks for uh for the folks tuning in um second of all uh abraham ram has suggested uh, a Christopher Lee Dracula film. You got to name a specific movie. Uh, yeah, there's so many, right? Like we'll we'll it will get its day in court. Should uh, there be an actual recommendation, not just general Christopher Lee movies, pick one and stand by it. Don't be a coward. Um, I, I like to assault the audience as much as possible. Um, okay. So we are. What about Vampire Circus? Where are we? Is it is it better? or worse than from dust till dawn um i actually just watched vampire circus this year as well i would say i like from dust till dawn better okay that's, so that's just more too. fun yeah 
All right. Which which neither one of those actually made my list, so I'm I'm kind of having to balance that out too. But I kind of feel the same way. I yeah, mm. I kind of feel like it bottoms our list for right now, but I think it's a real strong pick. It is. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's going to be the kind of like the idea behind this top twenty is mm-hmm. there's going to be some that are on bottoms, but they'll still ultimately make the list. So I'm good with. Oh, yeah. I just figured, you know, I'll throw it out there and we'll see where it lands. Exactly. Exactly. I like the way you're thinking. Um, okay. Uh, so we are now back. Uh, if I see this right, Heather, I believe it is your pick again. Has Ricky gone? Uh, I've yeah. gone, but oh, has, okay. Mo pick, has Mo picking? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. That, we, we've got right, our first sorry. five. Yeah, we've got okay. our first five. Okay. Okay. Um, hmm. I don't know how many people have seen this, so I'm not even sure if I want to throw it out there. But I will. Why not? A Girl Walks Home Alone at Night, 2014. Oh, yeah. yeah. I got to stay away from this one because I have not seen it yet. All right. Uh, Heather, make your case. Well, I think, first of all, this film shows a really a much more realistic um, approach of what vampires would look like. This, this woman who's a vampire hunts the street at night to take care of men that are taking advantage of women, which I think any woman has fantasized about doing at some point. And there's a really subtle love story that's developed in this. There's a great soundtrack and there's a particular scene with her and the male protagonist where there's a romantic interaction happening and it's, and it's put to music and it's, and it's very romantic and it's also suspenseful because you don't know what she's going to do. You're watching this slow descent of them on each other and you're wondering what choice she's going to make in the matter. Is she going to harm him or is she not? And I think the fact that the film is made in black and white, it just has a lot of classiness to it, which is why I put it on the list. Classy. It's good. good. Yeah, it's a it's a really, really good movie. Uh I I think everything Heather said is is absolutely right. I also think that it it's all black and white it looks gorgeous it has a weird like retro 50s ending that kind of comes out of nowhere but it's kind of amazing um yeah it is really atmospheric and creepy it's it's unusual it it feel but kind of haunting like it's a movie that i i saw a while back but i have never forgotten uh the movie so um yeah i i you know, I, I think it's great. Anybody else have a strong opinion about Girl Walks Home Alone at Night before we talk ranking here? It's really well done. Uh, yeah, it's. I've only seen it once. I did really like it. Some of the details are kind of like hazy in my head, but everything Heather said about it, I agree. Um, just the premise behind it, I think, is really unique. It's a, it's a good new take. Something that is always nice to see is when modern filmmakers take you know, classic movie monsters or concepts and find a new way to present them. And I think movies like Let the Right One In that has already been mentioned and A Girl Walks Home Alone at Night, they succeed in doing that. And sometimes it's tough to do because it's like you hear, oh, a vampire, okay, another vampire movie, right? But they really found an interesting and unique way to present it and i thought it was very well done and now i kind of wish i had seen it a second time so i had more insight into it but uh (laughs) but yeah i i agree it's a solid movie all right uh well so let us discuss is a girl walks home alone at night uh better or worse than vampire circus i think it's probably better i'm kind of in that camp i think it's better than vampire yeah me too all right, so I think so. Uh, from dusk till dawn, is it better than from dusk till dawn? I think it is. I think it's a better quality made film. Uh, uh, Heather slapping Tarantino right in the face. I know. Yeah. I feel bad, but like you guys have made some good arguments, so <laughs> I, I I don't disagree with that. I think a girl walks home alone at night is better than from dusk till dawn. Yeah, and that, when I really forced to think about it i just think the the story behind it the acting the filming the, and as much as soundtrack shouldn't matter the soundtrack in this movie just really really like the music just totally fit the film so well it's hard to forget about that yeah 
And if you ask me which one I would want to watch right now, I, I would kind of go A Girl Walks Home Alone at Night just because it's more unusual. It's a more interesting movie. Like uh, from Dust Till Dawn, again, terrific it's fun. fun. Yeah, but uh, I still I, I'm, I still resent it for being only half a vampire movie. <laughs> Yeah, that's good with me too, man. Yeah, I agree. All right. Uh, so, uh, what about Bram Stoker's Dracula? Is it better or worse than Bram Stoker's Dracula? Yeah, for me, it's not. But that's just me. Yeah, I would probably put Bram Stoker's Dracula ahead of it. You, yeah, I you, don't think you could take away from Gary Oldman's performance. Yeah. So you are know, we are, uh, are we yeah. saying this is where it lands our number yeah. four movie? Yeah. I mean, cool black and white eerie movie or Gary Oldman dressed up like a wolf humping a girl out on the park. <laughs> I mean, Clearly what we're gonna choose. Like, right. Let's be real. <laughs> yeah, you're not wrong. That's right. Yeah. Right. So uh okay. Uh I believe then uh it is now uh Scott Crawford's pick all right so i'm just kind of going through my list and one i i just have to mention it because it is one of my all-time favorite horror comedies and it just needs to be mentioned right away and that is what we do in the shadows oh yeah Mm -hmm. my god this movie is just it's a blend of pretty much almost every vampire stereotype and vampire type creatures done in such a smart comedic way that it still like holds true to like vampire lore as well it's it's yeah. just such a perfect movie to me yeah yeah uh i don't know it, anybody i like i i think it belongs high on this list yeah you know. it, it's hard it's hard to say because I, i'm still looking at this as if you're introducing people to the world of vampire movies this is when you kind of follow up the other ones with mm. or you you kind of don't understand but i totally agree man i love the movie i've watched it many many times so See, I don't the, know. The, what we do in the shadow should be number 20 with a disclaimer saying but first watch these 19 movies first <laughs> right. and the 20th is going to hit you <laughs> it's not a bad idea because i do i i do i do agree with the point ricky morgan was making it it's like if uh i think i i agree the movie's amazing for what it does it's just more if it, are we making this list you know as if we're introducing vampires to people because then it's like well if people have you actually understand like the bits they're satirizing and stuff so great yeah. movie though yeah hey, yeah uh, but that's that's really not the purpose of the of the list the list is just what's the best right so you know yeah that, that's mm-hmm. my only pullback on it is we're talking about what makes the definitive list versus what the scenario is of how we're introducing it so uh not taking anything away from it it's a it's a great movie it's fun any anyone else uh gonna like defend moving what we do in the shadows higher on the list uh i will just because uh like i was saying we're talking about like because we are kind of just talking the best vampire films yeah and this is just a like very very well done vampire film and it's also a great one to introduce people to horror in a way too sure it's like a yeah good entryway i think I'm I'm kind of in that camp where I don't necessarily want to see it at the bottom of the list. I totally get that argument. How about we yeah. split the difference and we put it right above Vampire Circus? Would yeah, anybody but... complain about that? I'm fine with that. No. And that that seems fair. I will accept it for now. <laughs> what 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 is your argument, Heather? I don't want to shortcut um, you here. I... You know what? I, I've been listening to what everyone has to say, and I think Ricky and Mike both made a very good point about how you need to see other vampire movies to get this movie. But what I really liked that this movie did, even with the comical spin, it talked about so many things of the vampire myth, how they have a familiar and the whole conversation with the familiar. Yeah. And 
talking about the werewolves and this whole history of vampires and werewolves not getting along even though and i feel like i wonder if we're discrediting it because of the comic community the comic element to it because if it was a serious film it hits all the right notes it covers all the folklore and even when he ha they have that guy over for dinner and they end up turning him very early on that seems kind of suspenseful like it's yeah. not scary but you're kind of like oh my god this guy's running around the house what's going to happen to him and even with the crew at the beginning they talk about how the crew has been given protection and then they go to that vampire party like i i wonder if we're because it's so different you know yeah. we talked about other films being different from each other what we do in the shadows is such a like it, it's out of a league on its own um yeah. So I think I'm fine with keeping it where it is now, but I hope we don't just move it down the list because it's it's a comedy. I think we need to recognize um, how much of the folklore is is pulled into it. That's all. I agree. Well, I've got yep. I've got three movies on my list that are considered horror comedies. So awesome! All right, you know, well, so there you, you go. Ricky. Bring in the comedy. I love it. Let's. Uh, yeah. In in that spirit, Ricky, what's your next pick? Let's do it. All right, so let's take the exact same synopsis that Heather gave us for her movie, and let's put it in 1992 and let John Landis direct it. Uh-huh. <laughs> Innocent Blood. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> See, I actually watched this uh, what, a few days ago because I was like, is this one that I should put down? And I was the more I watched, I was like, this is almost like a from Dust Till Dawn – yeah. semi similar because uh, it feels like you know it's almost a straight mafia movie for yeah. what the first half or three quarters with a little bit of vampire stuff sprinkled in but then you get to that final showdown and it's just straight vampire madness for like that last 20 25 minutes and yeah. i was like whoa this i'm definitely writing this one down i was like i don't know if it'll make the list or how you know high on those it would be but it definitely deserves to be discussed so yeah, and it, um, you it fits that category me, but yeah I, I yeah, agree it fits that category of the horror with the mm -hmm. with the dark humor in there uh the fact of mm -hmm. she's a vampire with a conscience right so if she's gonna have to kill people let's kill people that deserve being killed uh you got freaking don yeah. rickles in it i mean <laughs> yeah it's not wrong man it it feels like you know martin scorsese for you know, a 45 power, and then all of a sudden it turns into a horror or vampire movie. Because yeah. there's a lot of people, like, I had forgot how extensive this, like, it's not like they're just getting, like, random B players that, like, you've never seen before. There's a lot of familiar faces yeah. that have been in a lot of legit movies that show up in this one. <laughs> Robert Luggier! <Lugia. laughs> yeah. He, dude, he's a riot in this uh, yeah. man, and he's hilarious. <laughs> Yep. Anyways, have... that's just that's just one I grew up loving. It's just fun. I was saying I have no input on this one because I have not seen this one. I have not seen it, but I always thought the cover art was really sexy. <laughs> so I'm like, I'm oh, down she's... with whatever Ricky says. She's I she's and Mike. she's uh she's hot. So yeah, yeah, like it's just sexy. Her lips are super red and stuff. Like I'm yeah. sold. It looks like a good cover. <laughs> Done. It's it's John Landis. I mean, you know, if you right? if you like John Landis, it's kind of hard gonna to go like wrong the movie. with it. Yeah, it, it's been. Is so it the long. best vampire movie? Probably not, but yeah. I, I love it. <laughs> it. It's been so long since I've seen it. I I don't know that I have a ton to contribute here. I remember thinking it was good, not great, when I saw it. But I also, you know, it's been a lot of water under that bridge. Yeah, uh, I could watch it now and really love it. So I don't want to, I don't want to color this film. Uh, but that being said, we got to rank it. So where does yeah. it belong on this list? You know what? Crickets. Uh, you know, as 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 much as me and Ricky have both just praised it, I honestly can't say if I like it more than anything we've mentioned. So I mean, it, is it our number eight film? I think I mean, number eight's uh, fair for now. Okay. All right. For well, now. we'll uh, you know, uh, again, we can adjust within reason, but I like where all this is, is headed right now. Yeah. We'll, um, we'll be good with its place marker for now and we'll figure it out. Okay. So, uh, next question, uh, goes to me or next film goes to me. Oh, all right. I, I gotta, I gotta go with, with the heart here. Uh, my, my pick is, uh, thirst. 
uh, uh, the Park Chan Wook uh, film. Another one. And <laughs> let, let me. So here's my pitch for Thirst and why it belongs, I argue, high on this list. A. Uh, you're almost not going to run into a sexier vampire movie. Um, it is, uh, incredibly like, I think it's inventive in its use of the vampire mythology and, and kind of tying it to, uh, religion and this idea of resurrection and, and, and that sort of thing. Um, it is a little unusual. It's, it's a little more, uh, like vampirism as uh as, as sort of a disease, uh, kind of like Salem Slot, but it, you don't have like a widespread sort of infection. It's just sort of like oh, it's this weird medical condition, and I like the fact that all of the main characters' buddies, uh, as soon as he starts to become a vampire, and they're like hey, that sounds awesome. I need you to make me a vampire. And he's like, no, you don't understand. I have to drink a lot of blood and it's fucked up. And they're like, no, no, no. Yeah, I mean, yes, I get that. But also, you can like jump around like a, a, a human grasshopper and uh, and you look great. So I, I think Park Chan-wook is a fantastic director. I think Thirst yes. is maybe his best movie or yeah. certainly in that conversation. And I think it's... It, it it's a vampire movie of a slightly different stripe and and it's just um, like hypnotically amazing well i haven't seen it bo but i'm reading um the synopsis and it says something about an intense craving for blood and sex so it sounds like my dream life so <laughs> i definitely am buying into whatever you're selling this sounds like a really great movie that i'm probably going to watch sooner rather than later but unfortunately i haven't seen it yet yeah all right uh, anybody else? I'm just trying uh, to think where it fits on the list. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's, I think Thirst it, is amazing. Well-made foam. Yeah. Like, it sounds like it's it would good. be higher than a lot of the other films we've said so far. It's good. Yeah, it sounds yeah. like one I need to see. All right. Oh, you definitely do. Yeah, so it's between me, Mike, and Ricky here to, to, to do right by Thirst, mm -hmm. but not let our enthusiasm go so far as to, to overcome everything. I think... If I look, I'm going to I'm going to say I think it's it's number 2 on this list. I think it's better than Salem's Lot. I don't think it's as good as Let the Right One In, but that's boy, that is that's a fight that I'd be willing to have. Those are both amazing movies. Um I think uh, for my personal preference, I agree. It's Let the Right One In so far, I would say it's hard to dethrone at this point just because it's such a tight story it feels like there's little to no filler in it thirst it's a longer movie it's a little bit of everything but it does just about everything right and it's it's an amazing watch um i also had that on my list with the intention to be very high up on the list so i think as of now yeah i'm going to settle in with the number two spot for thirst i would i would say number three but majority rules yeah you think i mean like I said, I I love that movie a lot, and I don't want to I don't want to be the one pushing it too high on the list, but yeah. uh, I feel like oh man, all right, yeah. I mean, if for we, me, if, just c comparing it and in Salem's the stuff, Lot, the stuff of of legend of of Salem's Lot, right? It, it, it's I mean, um, it could go either way. I'll tell you what, if you don't have a strong opinion, and I think Mike and I are both of the mind of like, I, I think it's the number two. I just, I think it's so good. I yeah. thirst is amazing. Like, it may not remain number two, but boy, it's uh, it, it, it's one of my, my all-time favorites. And yeah. uh, in fact, weirdly, uh, the book I have about Korean horror films, the cover of it is uh the the girl that ends up getting turned in the movie it's her yeah. dumping the body in the in the pond and yes. oh man that, that's a it's just such a beautiful movie anyway uh okay uh i'm i'm pleased to hear such enthusiasm for thirst among those who have seen it and <laughs> and the ones that haven't uh well you know this list is is permanent it is irrefutable eh, sorry 
I know, um, to keep our I, podcast I going, we have to watch Thirst, or we're yes. getting fired, Scott. That's basically but, what we learned today. Yes, yeah. exactly. <laughs> okay, uh, Mike, you are up. All right, so um, this one, it's maybe it's a little bit of a cheat because it. I almost feel like this entire trilogy can be seen as one just representation of um, vampire movies. The Japanese take on Hammer, which it's the Bloodthirsty trilogy. Now you could break it. You can break it down to which of the three movies you like the most. Um, I'm gonna say if if I have to pick one, a lot of people like the first one in the trilogy the best, but I'll take the third one, Evil of Dracula, just because a Dracula, uh, the Dracula kind of goes Jason Voorhees at the end of yeah. it <laughs> in the last 15 minutes, just busting through walls and taking on people like crazy but if you're a fan of hammer horror and you want to see kind of like a japanese take on it their interpretation you can't go wrong with this trilogy it's it's amazing we actually covered it on our show months back um i hope most people here have seen it so we had, so we had something to say on it but evil of dracula or bloodthirsty trilogy uh, i would say belongs somewhere on the list Anyone seen any of them? <laughs> yeah, I have not. Yeah, I, no, I, yeah. I'm I'm out on this one. So, yeah, uh, I think it's just between you and Ricky because yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm I'm still making my way through the Hammer horror films. That's like my goal this year. So, <laughs> ooh, that's a that's a long road to hoe, man. <laughs> I know it is. <laughs> I, I I like the first one the best, but that's you know that's just me. Uh, yeah, I mean I like them all, and I I understand. Yeah, I mean the they're first all great. One probably is. I think the first one is pretty much the majority opinion that is that probably be my second favorite one. Um, but since only two of us have seen it, it's kind of hard to like yeah. see where it should be on the list. So and, I'm and fine knew, with it just kind of being right. thrown up there for now. We don't even have to like try to push it to be high. At least it's something that's the thing about it is we know a lot of these are probably they're not going to make the list, but at least we get to talk about them and let other people mm -hmm. that's checking the show out. Well, even co-host to actually go oh i need to need to, need to write that one down so yeah I, I agree man i think they're fantastic uh yeah yeah it it, it was a very it's, they're very interesting in a way because they have the hammer elements to them yeah they do but also with you know um a lot of the japanese culture stuff mixed in there as far as like the storylines family curses stuff like that i just think it's a great blend and it's it's it feels like a good homage to hammer films that's kind of for people that don't consider them fully on hammer films they still have that feel yeah that's kind of what i took it as as well as like just a a brushing up on what made the hammer movies cool but mm -hmm. taking it in another direction as well yeah i think they're i think they're great i'm really surprised bo hadn't seen them myself it, I, yeah. it's one of those that is like it is on the long list spot. of stuff <laughs> that like i need to see this i know yeah. I, so, what do you do with this? Because how, how do we, how do we put it on the, on the list? <laughs> it's up to you guys. Like, I mean, how good is it? We're gonna have to take your word for it. Is this, like, where where does it fall on the list? Are we talking? So my problem is, is we're looking at the consideration of a trilogy versus a movie. Mm -hmm. Can we can we legitimately put that on the list of the best movies as the trilogy, or do we pick a specific movie? I mean, if they're all essential, that like if if they're if you're saying there's one that is the best to see, like Evil of Dracula, that's kind of why I put that in there, parenthetically. Um, if you think that is the best example of it, where would that movie fit on this list? Hmm. What the, Ricky? The first one is what the Vampire Doll. Vampire Doll. Yep. Is that the name of the first one? So I mean, if general consensus is that one's the best, we can go with that one. I would. What is this number nine or ten? This is number ten uh, currently. Number ten. We'll call it Vampire Doll. I mean, my opinion is because only two of us have seen it. I would just keep it at ten for now, and if at the end when we're making adjustments, if me and Ricky feel really strongly yeah. that should be higher, well, we'll worry about it then. But it's hard to kind of push it now, just to do to only two of us have seen it we'll, we'll kind of see what the chat says as well and i mean there may be people that back for it there as well so 
All right. Yeah. Uh, I think technically the Vampire Doll is the title. We will mark it as such. Is currently uh, the the 10th best uh, and consequently the worst vampire movie of all time. <laughs> so uh, we have we have our top 10. Let's see where everything lands. Does anybody need to take a break? Uh, yeah, real quick. Okay. Uh, I'll tell you what then. We're going to take a quick five, folks, and uh, we will be right back. We are officially back now with uh, the the final ten films. We have some uh, some recommendations from chat, but before we get into any of that nonsense, uh, let us go around w at least one more time. Uh, Heather, give me one of the twenty best vampire movies of all time. This is like the hardest choice I've ever had to make. It's a real Sophie's choice, which by it the way really is not a is. vampire film. <laughs> I, I I have two movies here and. Man, it's just tearing out my poor little Heather Hart. Okay, I'm just going to have to go with my first crush and my first love of vampire films. And that is 30 Days of Night from 2007. Ooh, nice. Yeah. All right. <laughs> I was going to say, I was like, that's I mean, my favorite movie. <laughs> if, if you like your vampires vicious with no mercy, that's a movie for you. I loved it. I, mm -hmm. I, this movie, man, the third, and it's 30 days that they have to survive. And it, it, it caught me as so emotional, the sacrifices that are made in this movie. And then of course the final third act scene, it's just so powerful. It, it gets you in the feels and you care about what happens to all these characters. And I think that's so important in a movie like this, especially when you're dragging something out, obviously it's not <laughs> a 30 night movie, but when you're covering something over this long, you need to feel invested. And I think this movie just knocked it out of the park. Yeah. And that, that overhead shot, um, like the helicopter view of just vampires causing carnage. Yeah. yeah. That was, that was amazing. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And the way these vampires look too are like, it's not like the pretty vampires. They are like scary looking, which is really the nice. ugly. Yeah. Yep. All right, uh, let me be the lone voice of dissent here. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Oh. <laughs> I, I just want to say, I think 30 Days of Night has a great premise. I think the first half of it is really, really good. And then I think we spin our wheels for a little too long just running from place to place and hiding. And I wish the movie had a few more moves other than that. Well, what else were they going to do, Bo? Hey, that's why, <laughs> that, right, that's why screenwriters are good and some are not as good. You know, because you come up with stuff to do. And well, were I they feel... going to play Scrabble? Like, I don't understand. What were they going to do with their time? <laughs> like 30 any... nights of Scrabble. <laughs> but but the so much of that movie is like, oh my god, the vampires find, uh, found us. Let's run to this other building. Oh, we're safe. Holy shit, the vampires. Let's run to this other building. All right, everybody hide for a little bit. Holy shit, there's the vampires again. Everybody run. And it was like, I... Yeah, I get well, you it. You are missing the sacrifice part. That is an amazing scene, Bo, midway. I yeah, think, I, well, I, I think... Into it. <laughs> Yeah. I think Bo was trying to say it was 30, 30 days of hide and go seek. <laughs> 30 days <laughs> of hide and go seek is actually pretty kind of, but, <laughs> but like you said, that overhead shot, like I don't hate the movie or anything. I, I think that overhead shot is really cool. I think the the front end of the movie uh, I think is great. It's just it runs out of steam for me about halfway through, and the back end of it I kind of think is a little a little dull. Well, and to be fair, though, this is based off of a graphic novel, and the graphic novel in this kind of go hand in hand together, like the way it's all plays out. So I, I'll say if you if you're saying like the screenwriting's bad, that it's also kind of the writer of the uh, graphic novel too, because I think that yeah, I say like it was almost scene for scene if I remember correctly. Yeah, well, I saw Pretty Steve close. Niles' Mortal Remains as well, and maybe that is part of the problem. <laughs> 
but I, again, I don't want to stand in the way of of ranking this movie where you guys see fit. I'm I, like I'm clearly in the minority on this one. But so, what do you guys think? Where where does Thirty Days of Night belong? Um, for me, I I'm trying to remember. I wish we had something where we could see where they're all listed because I don't remember everyone. Uh, if you look at any of the streams, oh, you, my, you, maybe I should just do. You that will right see now. the list <laughs> prominently displayed. I'll go on YouTube. Um, I'm thinking after I look at the list. Oh boy, look at you, Bo. You're just on fire. Um, I'm gonna say number. I want it to replace Vampire Circus. You're so saying number, number eight, a yes. number eight movie. Yes. What what are, what are the rest? Of, I can live with number eight. That feels all right to me. Yeah, I agree with number eight as well. Anybody else coming strong for Thirty Days of Night over uh, over? Uh, that would that would put it behind what we do in the shadows. Anybody think it's better than what we do in the shadows? Let me put it in those terms. Any, anyone that bold to say yeah. 30 days <laughs> of night is, is better than what we do in the shadows. As much as I love it, I don't think I could even say that. All right. Yeah. How's that's that? a good spot for it. Yep. Yeah, everybody, everybody, good. everybody good. good with that? All right. Yep. Uh, where is the list? I know, I know now, Bo. <laughs> I was just brave enough to stay, so Baron guaranteed Scott wasn't looking at it either. He's just happy I, actually, I said something. <laughs> I actually have somebody watching the video right now and sent me a picture of it. So, ha. oh, there you go. Wow, you that's, that is fancy. <laughs> oh, um, all right. Uh, so speaking of Scott, what's right. uh, what's your film? Hmm. Once again, this is kind of uh, I'm in the spot with Heather because there's so many I want to mention, but uh. Uh, if I'm going to go up my list, I got to go with my heart. And it's one of my loves of vampire films. And that is Interview with a Vampire. Mm -hmm. One of the very few uh, movies that I can actually tolerate Tom Cruise in. Because <laughs> <laughs> he does such an amazing job as Lestat. And uh, between him and Brad Pitt and uh, Kirsten Dunst, so they all did such a great job acting in this. And it's that kind of colonial times vampirism and where the vampires are beautiful and attractive, but also can be very mean and nasty. And it's just such a great story, like from beginning to end. All right. Anyone else with a uh, very strong feelings about interview with the vampire? I've seen it once. I, I remember, I remember there's a lot of well-known actors in it that this is early in some careers um, I remember enjoying it. I don't remember a lot about it, though. I don't have a lot of input on this one. I feel inadequate to talk about Interview with a Vampire, but I trust what Scott says. <laughs> At least someone does. Where does, it, <laughs> where does it belong, Scott? Tell us. Mm, this is one of those where it's like, if I was going to put it on the list, I would. I think I would have to put it right behind what we do in the shadows i don't know if i could get it past what we do i in disagree the shadows. completely on that i know you do <laughs> i think interview with the vampire is a very good mainstream vampire movie that was made for a mainstream audience it was not made for horror fans it was definitely made for popular i think dracula is a much scarier movie i don't think interview with the vampire I, I agree with you that the acting was very good um from all three main characters i think they did a very good job and i think it was a great adaptation of Anne Rice's novel, but I do not think by any stance that it deserves that kind of recognition. Over 30 Days of Night, absolutely not. Um, Shots fired. How dare you? I think it's, I think it's bottom right now. I don't think it's the worst vampire movie of all time, but if I think what we've suggested, I don't think it's up there at all with what's I been have done. To, I have to agree with Heather. See, Ricky and I, we know. <laughs> I don't, and I don't dislike. I still think it's a great movie, but I think in in the list of what we're doing here, yeah, I don't it think. Just doesn't, I, I'm sorry, not to cut you off, Ricky. I was just gonna say, from my point of view, I don't think it gets over number ten. Yeah, I could, I could get, I could get behind it being, maybe, maybe above Innocent Blood. Yeah. Okay. Does anybody have? strong opinions here do is that too high too low i think that's fair see for me i i wouldn't well 
Okay, now I'm actually looking over the list. I pulled up this stream on my phone and I'm like looking the list up and down. It's like, I wouldn't have it over the vampire doll personally, but it's like hard to make that argument when most everyone hasn't seen it. So it's like, yeah. how, how strong do I want to push that? Um, but I would also have vampire circus over 30 days. So it's like, there's yeah. well, sure. my, I, I think kinda... some of the yes, yeah, so some of the moving around of movies. I almost feel like that should be our fight at the end, once we have the twenty listed, because it's kind of the changing around now. It's I don't know. It, it, I feel like it's difficult is, arguments to make. Right, but that is the processor. You are <laughs> we are we are ranking these as we go. If we if okay. if somebody like at the end we can we can hear objections, but. It is. Well, I think we... Mike is is right on point because what he said earlier is is kind of that thing that stands out to me, right? So it's like I saw it, but I really don't remember much, so it didn't really make the impact of some of these other films. You know, these may have watched some other ones, but I kind of feel that same way. It's like it's just kind of for what it's, it's not worth, one you really you don't really revisit. For what it's worth, there is someone in chat uh, now saying that Innocent Blood is superior to Interview with a Vampire. Yeah. All right. It, well, is a, it, is a, it is on my list, but... All right, I'll tell you what. We are going to put it ahead of the Vampire Doll. Oh, the, more for lack of knowledge. I, pure ignorance than anything. <laughs> but, uh, so right now, as the list stands, let the right one in. Still the best vampire movie of all time the vampire doll now uh the worst vampire movie of all time um okay so uh i ricky i believe it is is to you next how can we have this conversation and not bring up fright night oof mm. yep which one that was the original okay. which one hey. <laughs> oh how much you get kicked off the stream for that? Uh, what a, like, no more Friday night. Fright music. night eighty five. It, it was eighty five, right? Yes, eighty five. Yeah, Tom Holland. Uh, I got the privilege of seeing this movie in Chicago on the big screen with Tom Holland there, being introduced by Bruce Campbell. Ooh, wow! I don't, and I'm telling you, seeing this movie again on the big screen really made you appreciate this movie more. You know. Uh, I think growing up in the 80s and you see it on HBO or whatever, but getting to see it on the big screen made it that much even better, getting to see it the way it was intended. So it was pretty awesome event. Yeah, yeah. this is definitely deserves to be on the list because it is a absolute classic from the 80s. And, yeah. I mean, how can you resist the charms of Chris Sarandon? Yeah. yeah. The man wears the too. hell out of some sweaters in that movie. <laughs> oh, <my laughs> does. God. <laughs> that is yeah. that is hot sweater action um yeah i i mean look i i think fright night is is truly one of the great vampire movies i think it is everything you want out of a vampire movie and more like you get a little bit of uh werewolf semi, semi werewolf action and maybe a ghoul yeah. or something uh whatever right. the hell billy was um yeah yeah and it, like i think evil ed is a great character i uh, uh like I, I in my kitchen at home this will tell you how broken uh, an individual i am um <laughs> sometimes when i'm cooking i'll do that evil ed mm, mm. <laughs> uh, i love it i think it's really funny so Dinner's yeah in the oven uh -huh. yeah i I, th I think this this movie has a little bit of everything it had obviously uh dracula it has the there goes the neighborhood hybrid genre going through that spawn its own subgenre of movies um i think the characters especially you know depending on your age at the time that it came out it, the characters are so relatable oh, themselves yeah. I, I love that it uh features a, like a, a fictional iconic horror host that they enlist help yeah. because as a kid or teenager that that might be something you think you should do if you're in the situation go to an expert even though he turns out not to be so much but <laughs> yeah. it, i think the movie plays all the right notes it's great and uh this was actually because we were going around the last time this is actually the one i was going to name off too just because i was like we can't not bring up fright night so i totally agree this one it has to be well 
for our list, it has to be somewhere at least in the top five, if not top three. But that's I, I don't think it's top three material. I Oof. think Chris Randon is excellent in this film, but I think many of the characters are annoying. Um, many of them. And I think that the practical effects are phenomenal, but I do think it's a product of the 80s. And I enjoyed the remake, which was on my list that I did not say. A lot of people shit on that because of the CGI, but Colin Farrell was extremely sexy and brought a whole new life to that role. So I agree with top five, but I, I personally wouldn't put it in top three. Myself. All right. Any, any... Save 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 the re save the remake for when we're doing our top five hundred vampire movies. <laughs> what you know is? what? People shit on that movie, but it's not that bad. Scott just yep. watched it the other day and he agreed it's, with me. It is it's not all, that you know, bad. Yeah, it's yeah, all right. It's you know yeah. it's fine. It's a totally fine it's got a yeah. couple of nice moments, but Boy, I just I miss Roddy McDowell in that story so much. I think that uh, David Tennant is kind of a pale uh, comparison, and Roddy McDowell yeah. is just so delightful in the original Friday Night to me. But uh, we're not here to talk about no, our, our, our individual reactions. We're here to to rank it. And so Friday Night eighty five, what if? Let's all right. We're we're all kind of saying top five. What at the number five spot? Are we is Fright Night eighty five better or worse than Bram Stoker's Dracula? Mm, I, I um, don't think it's as good personally. Yeah, I think I have to agree with Heather. Like, it's I say it's almost tied with Bram Stoker's for me. So I would have to say, like, just kind of put it be right behind it. Okay. Um, if we left it at number five, who who is who? Like I know there, are, I think Mike and and Ricky and I are both like this could be the number three movie. I'd be perfectly happy, but I understand. Like, look, we are Ricky and I, especially we're just of that generation where, you yeah. know, Fright Night was so good. It was so formative a movie that when you saw that, you were like, "That's how you make a vampire movie." Like yeah. it, everybody, stop. That's how you do it. And and I understand there's some uh, some water under that bridge. So. Um, yeah, because I think uh, the reason I would say that is because it's kind of a story. Like, take the vampire part out of it, but it's kind of the rear window story. So rear it's just window. kind of sure, yeah, yeah. So it's yeah. kind of a rehash of that where I see, you know, Bram Stoker's Dracula is like, you know, the original Dracula style story. So I, it, I just have a hard time putting it past that. Uh, Chet, yeah, Chet is agreeing. Fright Night eighty five, not as good as Bram Stoker's Dracula. Uh, once more. Uh, chat leading us astray, but well, you know, what do you know? Chat do? is on, right on the money. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that understands us. <laughs> so, all right. Uh, where are we on the list? Who who does that? Oh, is that to me then? Did you? Uh, yeah. oh my goodness. Uh, okay, Bring the fire bow. Yeah, that's uh, I mean, there's so much heat on this list, it's just <laughs> it's hard to pick. I, all right, I, I'm gonna go with the one what brung me. Uh, we are talking kiss of the damned uh mm. the best uh hammer movie not made by hammer uh it is a it is all the euro sleaze that i want out of a 70s vampire movie um but modern and and kind of like certainly sexy does some fun stuff with vampire culture and and the behind the scenes of like what a vampire society would be like and has the hot mess of Mimi at the center of it. Uh, I, I love Kiss of the Damned. Kiss of the Damned, I think, is that movie. Like, if you were on a date and they were like, hey, let's watch a vampire movie. And you were like, all right, if I'm going to get laid tonight, yes, I'm going to put on Kiss of the Damned. Because by the time this thing is <laughs> over, if either of us are wearing pants, so someone has made a terrible mistake. Yes, I'm going to make a note hey, of that for tonight. But it's classy enough <laughs> that you can just watch and be like, well, that's a really good movie. Also, I need a few minutes alone. The, the same thing <laughs> happens when I watch Amazon Women from the Moon, Bo. Sure, absolutely. <laughs> uh, but anyway, anyone else seen Kiss of the... I know, I know Heather has now because yeah. I mentioned it to her, but anyone else have uh, an opinion about Kiss of the Damned? I have not seen it. It's sexy, it's sleazy, it's everything you would want. And a vampire movie. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Kiss of the Damned, appropriate title for that movie. I, I've actually only seen it once. I remember really liking it, and I remember at the time it seemed like reviews on it or just reaction was kind of mixed, 
which I was surprised at because I really liked it. I wish I had seen it more than once, so I still had more details on it, but I agree. It, I think it, it was a very good movie. Yeah, I, I have no quarrels with it either. I think it's... we, we Bo and I come from that same material of we like our 70s sleazy. <laughs> you know? So it's got that kind of feel to it. Uh, like you said, the Euro trash kind of thing. Uh, you put this together and do a a uh, combo of this and succubus, and you've got a fun-filled evening. Sure. Yeah, yeah. together or apart. Um, <laughs> I So a couple of people haven't seen it. I don't know how, how high the, the passion is for this film, even though the movie itself, high level of passion. Um, <laughs> I would pitch this as like a num a new number twelve, above Interview with a Vampire, but maybe not Innocent Blood. I think that's a fair rating. Boo! <laughs> 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 you should watch it, Scott. It's I, I will it's sexy. You just don't watch it at work. Oh, that's where I'm going to watch it because no, I want to freak no. everybody else out. <laughs> you may need a lot of alone time, yeah, so that may not be the so. best idea. I'll, I'll, say, I'll, I'll have a bottle of lotion next to me, okay? Excellent, excellent. <laughs> You'll need it. All right. And if anyone knocks on the door, I'll be like, "Excuse me, I'm accounting." <laughs> I'm accounting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think twelve's fair, Bo. Okay, so number twelve. Any any objections? Uh, no. All right. Hi. Uh, okay. Let's do one more from Mike Merriman, and then we have a lot of suggestions from the chat, and I think we're gonna we're gonna have a good time uh, peeling through that. So, um, Mike. All right. Well, I already mentioned it that Fright Night was gonna be the one when I knew we had one left to pick, but the uh, great Ricky Morgan suggested already. So, I am going to make a pick that is going to be controversial for at least one person on this cast had to do it. I'm going with the lost boys. <laughs> um, Shops fired. I, you know, I know it's weird. Cause when I was growing up and I saw this, I didn't think, I, I thought it was pretty much universally loved, but through the years I found out now there's a contingent that has a lot of negative things to say about it, or just, you know, maybe lukewarm reaction to it. So I am kind of interested to see what, everyone on this cast has to say of lost boys now you know i was the perfect age when it came out you know i was young it, it was one of the movies that probably got me into just the vampire genre and seeking out more of it i also have the local bias i've walked that boardwalk many times my kids have rode on that carousel many times so yes there's a local connection that it kind of feels cool walking on the movie lo and not even like quote unquote visiting a movie location, but you're literally on it, just on it all the time. Cause they actually filmed on the boardwalk. So yes, uh, lost boys. I love the cast. I love kind of the idea behind it. I love the concept. Um, I don't know what else to say. I just want to hear if there's any um, contrarian opinions and what they have to say about it. Cause um, I know it's not universally loved as I once thought it was. So, Lost Boys, let's get it on the list, guys. What does everybody say? I think it is a fun movie. It didn't make my ten top ten list, but uh, because it, uh, one thing I will say, it is definitely the uh, '80s version of Twilight. But uh, see, everyone says, well, not everyone. That, that's because it that. is. I'm like, just like no. <laughs> Yes, it is. Oh. Yes, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they don't sparkle if that makes you feel better. Yeah. Right. But it's a love story. It's it's catchy. It, it was when with pop culture at the time. It was smart. Like it was yeah. a smart film. How they made yeah. that film was very clever for 1987. Yeah. And and it does so have a very sucking Brady bunch. Yes. <laughs> and it does have a very sexy saxophone player. You, you got to give it that. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Tim, Tim Capella, please play me. Right? There's a lot of good people, good looking people in that movie. A lot of good looking. Oh, people. there is. So, yeah, Early Jason good. Patrick. Yeah. Yeah, but I have to say though, this is one of those movies. Like, if we're gonna talk vampires, you at least got to bring up Lost Boys in conversation because it is sure. part of that culture. Like, and it's one of those movies that is well known. Yep, it's iconic. And I'm not saying 
Yeah, and I'm not saying when all is said and done, it'll still be on the top 20, but we've got empty slots on there, so it has to be on there for now, right? Yeah, that's At right. At least a little bit of time, put it on there. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, you know, I'm, I'm kind of in the uh, Heather Powell camp. I, I think where this is a movie that I think is a perfectly fine mainstream Hollywood produced horror film. It's, uh, it's got some good moments in it. Um, I, my anger towards Lost Boys has faded over time, but when I first saw it, I, I thought it was a little, uh, a little soft uh as a vampire movie i was like where why isn't anyone ripping out a throat here this yeah. is this is boring the hell out of me uh i also uh have never been a jamie gertz fan that's just me um oh you mean uh, the movie when she's dancing and she does the <laughs> <laughs> i like that <laughs> all the stuff perfectly all the stuff with her and the little kid i just couldn't be bothered with for the entire run of that movie i'm just like yeah fine whatever um i and and also i'm not a big like cory Haim, cory feldman guy so i think that stuff is kind of fine but it doesn't it doesn't really uh blow me away but i understand like a lot of brothers man a lot of people love that movie and i'm not like i i will never tell someone that they are wrong for truly loving a movie so it, like lost boys doesn't really work for me it's not a, I, i've seen it I, probably four or five times over the course of my life if i never see it again i'll be fine um <laughs> but I, so you know that's my piece where does anyone have a, a strong feeling about where it belongs on this list better than interview with a vampire I can't agree with that one. Man. <laughs> wow. She's shooting you down, man. She I is. Know, I know. We're I supposed know. to record tonight. We're not recording now. We're done. <laughs> That's, it. That's it. Like, it's over. It's like when the Beatles did Let hey, It Ricky, Be. Hey, Ricky, you want to join another podcast? <laughs> <laughs> Why not? <laughs> I mean, yeah. I I kind of feel like it, it belongs in that 30 Days a Night Vampire Circus Innocent Blood kind of range. But that's me. I mean, uh, yeah. yeah, I mean, yeah. I, I think we're dancing around it because it is iconic. People know it by name. There's mm -hmm. memes of it. I mean, you know, so but does that make it one of the best ever versus pop culture popularity? You know, uh, that's a hard one to answer. I like it personally, but it's got its flaws just like all of these do. Yeah. Chat, um, chat saying better than interview with a vampire. Oh, yeah. your chat you know, boo. Yeah, boo. I mean, I I personally yes. would rather watch it than in real, but that's just me. Well, there's there's no question. I'd be grabbing that one first. Uh, but. all right. So, d what <laughs> I'm about feeling all the love today? Does it <laughs> does it need Scott's like this interview is over? <laughs> does, does it rank above Innocent Blood or Kiss of the Damned for those who have seen Kiss of the Damned? Like for me, Kiss of the Damned gets down in a way that Lost Boys wouldn't dream of. That's true. That's true. I would put it over Innocent Blood, but Kiss of the Damned. Um, I don't know. That's a tough one. Uh, I I think Kiss of the Damned just has too much or too, too many elements that I love from older vampire movies that kind of update it really well. They keep all the sleaze that mm -hmm. a lot of modern movies try to cut out like they're like oh let's bring those old kind of scary sleazy movies but let's cut all that stuff up like kiss of the dam's like nope you're coming with it <laughs> <laughs> right. um so i would probably stay right behind kiss of the damned number 13 anybody anybody have a, a major complaint if it lands at number 13 other than mike who clearly Scott. <laughs> yeah are you yeah <laughs> i mean <laughs> Where where does it belong? Where where should we move it other than number thirteen? Lucky number thirteen. I mean, I'm fine with that. I just uh, I'm just getting everybody crap because the interview with the vampire still sore of that. <laughs> you know, uh, if you picked better movies, this wouldn't happen. Oh, so much. Wow, oh, shots fired! All right, oh. speaking wow, of, Bo. Wow. Speak, speaking of shots fired, it is now time for uh, chat to weigh in, oh. and uh, and so we are going to be. Um, I'm I'm gonna be selecting a handful of movies uh, recommended by the chat. Um, so the first of those movies, I think this is a, a good pick from chat. Uh, that's going to be Afflicted, the uh, found footage film. 
Um, I think uh, didn't make my top ten, but I gotta say, I think Afflicted is a really cool vampire film. Yeah, it's good. Anybody else seen this I one? I haven't seen it. So, all right, me. I haven't right, seen it either. Me, Ricky, and and Mike then are going to be the uh, proponents of this movie. I mean, one of the better found footage movies I've ever seen. I but think. does that really say a lot? <laughs> I mean, you know, truth. <laughs> I, I like there are some that I really enjoy, but I think Afflicted like uses the found footage stuff really cleverly. And, it does. Yep. And and as far yeah. as being a vampire movie, it's kind of an interesting take on it. It's almost like, hey, what if when you became a vampire, you also became a superhero? But mm-hmm. but also you still got to kill things and drink blood. So I don't. I think it's real cool. I think it's like if you did a found footage nah, blade is maybe overstating it, but there's an element of like this is a little actiony for most found footage movies. There are like actual yeah. action set pieces in that thing, so it's not just wandering around in the woods and that kind of thing. But uh, I don't know. What do you guys, uh, other other folks who have seen Afflicted, where do you come down on it? I think it's a solid movie. I do agree. It's it's another one of those movies that finds kind of like a new twist on the vampire genre. It's not your you know it's not your basic classic story uh, when it comes to vampire stuff. So I think it belongs somewhere on the list easily. And well, we got empty slots, so it's going to be on there for now, regardless, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, mean- I don't. I, I don't have a problem with it. It's just found footage is never really my bag. I have seen this one. There's many that I just didn't see. But I did check this one out. I, I like anytime you can take the the legends of what's supposed to happen, you can kind of turn it on its ear. I'm always interested because I like the different takes on stuff. So uh, I enjoyed it. Uh, anyone feel like we need to move it or does it just belong kind of last on this list until something better comes along? Yeah. Give it a placeholder and I'm sure we're going to do some shuffling by the time we get through all this. Yeah. Totally fine. Uh, all right. Uh, the next from the chat, uh, Nosferatu, uh, I think it's 79 is the Werner Herzog film. Yeah. That Uh, was on my list. (laughs) Was on my list as well. And, and knowing what the chat was recommending, I didn't, I didn't push it because I knew we were going to get here. Um, uh, Ricky, yeah. What, what do you think? Where does, uh, what, how do you feel about this movie? Where do you think it belongs? Uh, Uh, what I can't see the list. What's at fifteen? Afflicted, or no? Is it fifteen? If I'm looking at the most modern list, that's what we just put on. Vampire Doll is fifteen. Afflicted is sixteen. Man, I really interview with the vampire is fourteen. I really, I really watched, I really watched this one a lot. (laughs) This is one of my go-to vampire movies, Uh, and that may be odd, uh, but for me, I'd put it around in that ballpark, thirteen or fourteen, fifteen. Yeah, so I wouldn't be upset if it like got uh, because got passed. uh interview the vampire or anything like like heck maybe even what we do in the shadows i have not seen this one but oh. it's, it's freaking nasferatu so it deserves to be well, pretty it's, high up it's it's klaus kinski as nasferatu yeah. what else right, you so want right and there isabella ajani which you know i have to admit i've got a thing for but anyways um uh, yeah i mean it's 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 herzog i mean the the relationship between him and kinski in any movie they make is bizarre the fact that they shot this movie scene by scene and then they would shoot an English version and a, and a German version and they released both movies and you can see the subtle differences because they didn't just overdub. They just completely reshot everything twice. Yeah. Gotten into oh. way too much history. I just think this movie is the perfect description of dread. Mm-hmm. There is a dread in this piece of film that I have not seen in anything else. Uh, who who else has seen this this movie? Me and Ricky? 
Probably. Is that <laughs> it? Uh, I like I'm with I'm with him. I think this is truly one of the all time greats of of this particular subgenre. I like it. I like it at number eight. I like it just below from dust till dawn, just because. And e I think it's better than that. I think I, realistically, I think it belongs at like number three or four. It, it really does. I, I've got but, it made my top ten on on my initial list. And again, that's that repeatability of being able to watch it. But yeah. there's no doubt that it is fantastic. Uh, and it, the fact that only Ricky and I have seen it, I, I I feel like it belongs in the top 10 because it really is that good. But also, I don't want to put it too high because most of the people uh, yeah. here have not seen it. And That's why I was saying somewhere around 15 or so because, again, I hope the game plan is people actually go out and check these out. And I think that would change. You know, yeah absolutely absolutely uh i'm okay with it being moved higher even though i haven't seen it um ricky and i seem to really be on par with our movie taste <laughs> so i really trust ricky and Bo, you seem okay too so i think if both of you think that it belongs somewhere i'd be i'd be fine with that decision um well I, have a problem. I can't speak for I, the other two. I, I feel comfortable with it. I have I a agree. problem with putting it that high because it's not that popular. Uh, mm -hmm. Again, two yeah. of us, two out of the five have seen it. That's the only thing that's holding it back because we're going to put a movie in the top ten that the majority yeah. of people haven't seen. What? Well, shame well, on y'all for not seeing it. We, we'll, uh, tell you what, while we pause the show, me, Scott, and Heather will watch it right now. <laughs> yeah. and, uh, we'll be back in a couple hours. What about, yeah. what about Lucky 13? Ricky, what about between that's, Kiss of the Damned and Lost Boys? That's kind of where I'm at okay. with it because, again, just to have it represented and us to, you know, promote it as you need to check this out. If you love this genre of, of horror flicks, this is one you got to see. Yeah. I um, mean, and Chad Green, I appreciate that. But, um, yeah, I, I think, I think you know, if, if only this list weren't comprehensive and then when we put the seal on this, that's it. That's yeah. as good, that that is the top twenty list. Uh, yeah. So uh, let's let's pull in another from from chat here. Uh, let's go with one of that. I'm surprised nobody uh, picked. Uh, Near dark. Yeah, it's yep, that was, it was that was what I was going to bring up. Yeah. So near dark, uh, boy, yeah. amazing movie. Yeah. I mean that's it's it's early Catherine Bigelow. It's it's great Bill Paxton. Um, Greenberg cinematography. I mean you can't go wrong with this. One. Yeah, Lance Henriksen, freaking uh, it's a road movie with vampires. It's just awesome and it's like it, kind of old west feeling. This and, is what Bill Bill Paxton's character from Terminator ended up after uh, Arnold. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He ended up as a road vampire. <laughs> <laughs> um. I, I think that bar scene is just one of the great all-time vampire scenes in general. Yeah. Yep. I completely agree. The only thing that I don't like about this is the kind of sappy ending, but that's about it. I Yeah, I, I can agree with that. Um, any, anybody else uh, have a, a, a vocal argument for Near Dark? <laughs> the only dislike I have of it is the fact that when they re-released it, they put that Twilight-looking cover on it. <laughs> oh, yeah, that too. <laughs> That is not a great cover. You are you are oh. correct, sir. <laughs> um, where all right? So, but Near Dark is impressive. Where does it belong on this list? Are we talking top ten? It, it was yeah, my thinking, number four. All right, I was well, like, I'm thinking almost top. I'm almost thinking top five even because man, this movie is incredible. Yeah. What? All right, so let's. I I personally wouldn't put it above Fright Night '85, but right behind it, I think is good. For like me. a number exactly, six. It's exactly where I had it. Right after Fright Night. Yeah. I, I yeah. can kind of get six, down with yeah. that. Uh number six. Anybody I'd be fine with that. Yeah. Heather, have you seen Near Dark? I haven't seen it. So that's why I'm so quiet. Okay. Well uh, I'll let you guys make the decision. I obviously you need to see your near dark. It is the sixth uh, best uh vampire movie of all time. <laughs> um all right. Uh we have one to go. And I'm trying to decide which to pick from uh, this group. I all right. I I think it's something that we got to talk about because uh, it is. If we're talking about vampire movies, uh, you're talking at least in part about John Carpenter's vampires. 
<laughs> okay. So <laughs> I feel like I feel like it it needs a day in court. Um, it is it is arguably my favorite James Woods performance. Yeah. Mm. Uh, even though it is real hammy. Um it's I mean, I don't think Vampires is a great movie. I'm not going for a, a full throated recommendation here. I think it's got some interesting ideas. I don't think it capitalizes on most of them, but I think it's an interesting movie and 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 something conceptually about hey, this team of mercenaries hired by the Vatican going around and killing vampires, I think is undisputably a cool idea. I thought we were doing that. Uh, right, as a group. <laughs> We should. That's what we're doing after this recording. Is we're going awesome. Vampire, huh? I am down. We're gonna. Can we we're get gonna snacks go. beforehand. Yes. Giant ancient crosses. Some winches <laughs> to drag them rent out. A, yeah. Rent, rent a celebration. Oh, I thought you were talking about regular room. medieval winches. Damn. No. no, 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 no not <laughs> not, <laughs> not <laughs> beer winches, but damn it. Uh, I want some more winches and mead. All right. What What do you guys think about this one? Where Where are we with, with vampires? Great score. Mm. Great opening scene. Um, I I mean I remember seeing it in the theater. I liked it. Man, is it? It's 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 I fun. It I mean, it, it's it's that thing again of, you know, it's just one I don't revisit a lot, but I don't dislike it. You know. Yeah, it's yeah. it's cheesy, um, and definitely not one of Carpenter's best, but uh. Yeah, I look at it as like a fun movie, but when I look over the rest of the list, as far as everything I've seen, I don't know if there's anything about Carpenter's Vampires movie that stands out that makes me say it has to be on the list. Um, yeah. yeah. I think it's a good pop culture vampire movie. If you're having a party or a couple friends over and they want to watch a fun vampire movie, it's easy to throw on, easy to follow. You can have some drinks and other things and not lose track of what's going on and it really is a product of 1997 and it's one of the better products of 1997 so i think it deserves respect for that um definitely not higher than where it is now uh personally if we leave it on yeah yeah to me you take dust till dawn and vampires you really don't have vampires without dust till dawn very true very true so i I think they're kind of counterparts in a weird kind of way i think you could throw them both on in a night and get out the popcorn and have a blast. Yeah, that's that's where I set this one at. I don't think it's as good as this one on by any means. Uh, where where do you we think this ranks? Does it uh, is it bottom of the list? Do we do we move it up to? I don't should think it should I be moved it... up. Yeah, so I think it should stay at the bottom. Like it's where like because it if it's gonna be on the list, yeah, it's I don't know if it's any better than the rest of these films that we've mentioned. All right, all right uh i i i'm kind of in agreement unless anyone has a, a big push to move it higher i think a uh, kind of an honorable mention slot as number 19 for at least for now we have one film to go mm-hmm. absolutely uh okay let us then um so a couple of christopher lee entries and i feel like we should talk about at least one of them and i think think i i think this is the guy uh so it is a if memory serves i'll have to look the jess franco retelling with christopher lee in the starring role uh count dracula um it is not hammer but it is a pretty faithful retelling of the stoker story Mm um let's see yeah 1970 christopher lee uh yes directed by jess franco um and it is uh it's him it's herbert lom as van helsing klaus kinski is renfield which is is really cool um yeah it's it is not again not a hammer production but we've right. got christopher lee showing up as dracula in a a sumptuous uh spanish production so uh first of all anybody seen this one besides me and ricky and and where does it belong nope i'm 
The only Christopher Lee ones I've seen are the few Hammer films. Yeah, I don't believe I've seen this one. Yeah. Uh, you know, it, it, it's just Franco. I mean, <laughs> enough said, really. I mean, what a what a grab bag of a director, right? I mean, yeah. kind of all over the place. Right. This one mm-hmm. is surprisingly really well done. I'm not, I'm not discrediting just Franco, but he has made a lot of crap. But this one is it's you're kind of surprised when you find out that it's him. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 atmospheric. It's kind of it still has all the gothic stuff from the Hammer movies. Uh, yeah. It doesn't have quite the Technicolor look of those, but it is uh, it's it, it like it's a really good telling of the Dracula story. Yeah. And Christopher Lee is just good as and he's got a nice mustache in this one, too, uh, <laughs> uh, is good as Dracula. Uh, but it is kind of lesser Dracula. It's not totally lesser for Christopher Lee as Dracula, but I'm kind of of the mind. My my personal favorite Hammer movie is Brides of Dracula, which has no Christopher Lee at all in it. It's just yeah. awesome. Um, but a lot of people love Christopher Lee. I feel like we got to have Christopher Lee on this list somewhere. Christopher Lee was the first Dracula to scare me with the Scalari lenses. Terrified me. Yeah, and he kind of, like, he jumped over furniture and chased people and shit. He wasn't, yeah. like, creeping around the castle with a cape over his mouth. Um, right. But, I, you know, if I were going to put it anywhere on this list, I'd probably put it, I, you know, I might jump it to number 18. Yeah, I can see that. I, I can see it. Yeah, I wouldn't argue that just because, I mean, for one, it is Christopher Lee. All right. I'm down. Uh, all right. I don't know that... Go on, sorry. No. No, you're good? Are you sure? Speak now. <laughs> uh because lady ladies and gentlemen here, we have assembled before us the twenty best uh vampire films of all time. Um and I'll tell you what, uh we're not gonna debate the list too much because that takes away the fun of uh assembling it in the manner we have. But for everyone uh, besides myself, we we will allow four quick objections, and we'll do this all democratic-like. So if anyone objects to a particular movie's placement on the list, and there are enough people who agree, we will make that adjustment. Does that seem fair? All right. Who has an objection on this list? I, the only one I can object would be Interview the Vampire, but like I already know everybody's stance on that, so I'm not going to make an argument for it. Other than that, I'm fine with the list. All right. Anyone else? I'm looking over it right now. Let's see. Going once. Going twice. I think I'm good, because the only things I would potentially move are things that too many people haven't seen, so... I yeah. wouldn't push it. Uh, and that's kind of tough, but also, you know, in the spirit of this list, uh, you know, some of that stuff is by nature going to be stuff that not everyone has seen, but I think that makes for a more interesting list. So, ladies and gentlemen of uh, of, of the viewing audience, uh, the greatest vampire film of all time, let the right one in. Uh, let's just start from the bottom. Number 20, worst, worst vampire movie of all time, John Carpenter's <laughs> Vampires. <laughs> uh number 19 afflicted number 18 count dracula number 17 the vampire doll number 16 interview with a vampire number 15 the lost boys number 14 nosferatu 1979 uh number 13 kiss of the damned number 12 innocent blood number 11 vampire circus number 10 30 days of night number nine what we do in the shadows Number eight, From Dusk Till Dawn. Number seven, A Girl Walks Home Alone at Night. Number six, Near Dark. The top five, Fright Night 85 at number five, Bram Stoker's Dracula at number four, Salem's Lot uh, at number three, Thirst at number two, Let the Right One In, your greatest uh, vampire movie of all time. So, uh, that concludes our list making um chat pushing back on vampires uh being the worst movie uh uh, worst vampire movie of all time uh you know 
Look, that's what you get when you assemble a round table of experts. <laughs> <laughs> They will they will uh, dump expert all over your suggestion. Um, so uh, we're gonna go around one more time. Everybody, uh, l- let us know where people can find you, and also if you have an honorable mention that was not mentioned here on the show, uh, then fire fire your honorable mention vampire movie at us, and uh, and there you have it. So let's start with uh, Heather. Where can people find you? What is your uh, your movie uh, that you would have on this list? Well, the movie that I would have had on this list was The Hunger, 1983, with Mr. David Bowie. I think that movie's very sexy, Uh, but that's okay, you know. And you can find me at the Friday Nightmares podcast page that I do with Scott Crawford or Smoke Show Crawford. And I'm also on another podcast called It's Not Horror Okay, and that's on the Dark Discussion Network. Excellent. No honorable. Mi- oh, you said your honorable. Yeah, you, the, you the, said hunger, the hunger. No, I, yeah. sorry, I forgot because it was so good. I was like, how is that not on the list? But which is right? a great, yeah, it's a yeah, great right? one. Not one of the twenty best vampire mu- movies of all time. There you have it. Nope. Uh, Scott, uh, same question. Where can people find you? And and what is your honor- honorable mention? All right. So my honorable mention was going to be uh, Shadow of a Vampire because I just love yeah. the whole movie within a movie and the whole Willem Dafoe man. Yeah, Willem Dafoe is freaking Nosferatu is just incredible. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, w- I would have loved to see that on the list, but you know, it is what it is. Um, but yeah, you can pretty much find me in the exact same places with Heather Powell. We are uh, both uh, the two members of the Friday Nightmares podcast, which is under the Kill the Cast banner on Legion Podcasts. Uh, we are also both on It's Not Horror OK on the Dark Discussions Network. And yeah, you can see me lurking around on facebook as scott crawford or on the friday nightmares podcast page excellent uh and ricky morgan same same questions uh how many honorable mentions do we get just the one (laughs) don't be greedy (laughs) if i have to go with one that i think a lot of these on this list have totally been inspired by and that's going to be martin from george romero 1977 yes the Great the movie. idea of being a vampire but not having the fangs and biting people where you literally have to sedate people and drink their blood by any means possible and the fact of him fighting the idea that he's a vampire and his parents or his grandfather not agreeing with what he's doing and just the chaos that that whole thing is i just think it's a great movie uh, i love the early romero stuff like that anyways uh, definitely one of romero's best i agree so if, if you're intrigued by that definitely check it out it's it's kind of an unsung movie of his that i think needs to get more appreciation uh where you can find me uh <laughs> turn on the internet <laughs> <laughs> you can find me in the sporting's good department s smart's top of the line uh, uh, <laughs> S-Mart. Uh, shop s smart <laughs> <laughs> uh Hail Ming Power Hour, uh, which is my original show that I started off with that is still a buttload of fun to to do. Uh, Three Men in a Tubi, which is a new show we've done off of that. Uh, Short Bus Cinema, where me and Johnny Crew are looking for the worst movie ever made. Uh, uh, (laughs) Red Movie Rama, which is me and myself playing 12 different characters doing bad movie reviews. (laughs) uh you know what's awesome which is me and billy stewart from scary dad's podcast just uh reveling and everything that's awesome that's all i can think of right now all right uh, that's five by my count that seems like enough (laughs) you say three three men in a tubi yeah Yeah. i love the name of that (laughs) yeah (laughs) that's awesome we even read we even did the poster where it's three of us holding uh the tubi logo you know (laughs) yeah that's very funny and also uh as someone who has gone through that tubi library a couple of times like boy they are pulling them in from the four corners for the (laughs) that's the whole point yeah there's there's some quality crap there um (laughs) mike uh where where can people find you and what what is your honorable mention all right, people can hear me on No More Room in Hell and Fresh Cuts on the Dark Discussions podcast. We just got done recording our top 10 
horror movies of 2020. Scott was there for that. Along sure with was. Some other, other folks. Um, my honorable mention, actually, you know, I was holding off on this. This, If we would have done 10 each, this would have got brought up, but I was kind of holding off because this isn't necessarily a horror movie. It's more action, but I love the characters in it. I think the opening scene is one of like the greatest um and that's blade um that that blood rave techno scene is just awesome i know a lot of people think are they personally like blade 2 better just because they ramp up the action but i just feel the characters in the first one are superior i think the first one is a better representation of the comic um, it feels like a comic book like movie. I love the concept of the character of Blade kind of being the half vampire, half human. So his his um, I guess supernatural or the rules kind of work a little bit different for him. I think you know the daywalker aspect that he can walk out during the day and the vampires want to kind of clone that blood from him so they can get the powers. I uh, Stephen Dorf is Stephen, you know <laughs> he's awesome. Um, so I I was just holding off because since it's not a horror, I, I wasn't sure how much that mattered. But I uh, for a top 20, I would my personal preference would be to find a spot for Blade on there, but I'm fine with the list we made. So um that's my honorable mention, Blade. Excellent. Uh and uh, I of course am Bo Ranstell, you can find all this and more uh at legionpodcasts.com and if you're watching this video then uh please follow us on uh youtube.com forward slash legion podcasts uh facebook.com forward slash legion podcasts uh twitter.com forward slash legion podcasts and uh twitch.tv forward slash legion podcasts uh and youtube facebook and uh and twitch are the only places that you will be able to get this particular show so uh, thanks for watching. Uh, thank you, everyone who participated on this panel. You guys were amazing, and uh, and we have assembled the definitive list. Uh, no, don't even worry about it. Next time <laughs> someone says, "What are the best vampire movies?" Now you got twenty uh, that are are definitively the only and best twenty uh, vampire movies of all time. So uh, yeah, you can't argue. No, mm-hmm. inarguable. Thanks for watching, everybody. Bye. Bye. Later. Peace.